Slipknot drummer Jay Weinberg talks about replacing Joey Jordison. Metallica guitarist Kirk Hammett shares the hilarious place he was when he found out he was going to join the band. Great White apologizes for performing at a maskless concert and more. Stick with us. Thanks for joining Rockfeed today. We're going to get to this story from Jay Weinberg in just a moment. But first, there has been controversy this weekend with the band Great White. You'll remember they had a terrible tragedy where they had pyro on stage and it led to a mass casualty incident um, at one of their shows back in the early 2000s. Now they're being criticized again for performing at a show where there are no people in the crowd wearing masks and they've released a statement in response. Here's a little bit of video from the show. So this led to criticism for the band, and there were also people who were defending them as well. Typical on the internet, people having differing opinions. And so Great White has issued the following statement that says, We understand that there are some people who are upset that we performed this show during this trying time. We assure you that we worked with the promoter. North Dakota's government recommends masks be worn. However, we are not in a position to enforce the laws. We have the luxury of hindsight, and we would like to apologize to those who disagree with our decision to fulfill our contractual agreement. The promoter and staff were nothing but professional and assured us uh, of the safety precautions. Our intent was simply to perform our gig outside in a welcoming small uh, town. We value the health and safety of each and every one of our fans, as well as our American and global community. We are far from perfect. Next up, Nickelback guitarist Ryan Peake recently appeared on Talk is Jericho, Chris Jericho's podcast, and he talked about a lot of the hate that Nickelback has gotten over the years and why he didn't really expect that to happen for the band. Remember, Nickelback isn't just a band that some people say they don't like. Uh, It's fair to say that they have received probably the most hate in the history of just about any band. This is what he said to talk as Jericho. Everybody lives in their own microcosm. It's always worse for you, it seems, but everybody gets their degree of hate and degree of detractors and vitriol on the internet. So you understand it more when you're in the eye of the hurricane and think of your own hurricane. You think you're the only one it's happening to sometimes. I didn't realize we would be so polarizing. That's one thing that's kind of shocking to me. I wasn't really hyper aware in any sense in the 70s when the disco polarization was going on. Uh, That was the first time I'd heard of people going crazy about disco hate, people getting mad about some kind of music. I was just like, just don't listen to it. You listen to what you like and you don't listen to what you hate. And I don't get too wound up about it. So when it happens, I try to get inside their heads as to why people get so wound up about it. There's a choice. Why do you get wound up about this thing? I think people like to communicate. They do. They love to talk about what itches their ass, so to speak. Oh, you too? Yeah. The hate that's gone towards Nickelback for years is probably because for a period of time, their music was very oversaturated. It was all over the radio. You know, you you really couldn't miss it when you listened to it. And people just seem to get tired of that. Whenever something is immensely popular, there is a segment that tends to rebel against that and and they don't want to, you know, be a part of that large group. And so I think that's what happened to Nickelback. You know, they're not... Not that they're small, they're still a massive band now, but there was a time where they were probably the biggest musical act in general in the world uh, back in the early 2000s. Next up, Metallica guitarist Kirk Hammett had an interesting story to tell about how he joined the band and where he was. The Exodus co-founding guitarist told the story in a brand new interview. Speaking to Metal Hammer, they asked, when did you first hear Metallica? He said, I'd seen a flyer. Uh, Paul had seen them through their first show ever in the Bay Area. I thought... I forget where he was. He said they were warring. We have to go see them and then actually got on the bill to play with them. We opened the show and then they came on and the roof just went off and then a local band uh, came on and everyone just left. What were the first impressions of them? He said, I've said this before and I'll say it again, but I thought these guys are great, but they'd be so much better with me. Around that time, Exodus were going through some personnel, uh, personnel changes. We just got rid of our previous bass player and brought a new bass player in and it was a different dynamic within the band we were we weren't rehearsing for one reason or another i don't know maybe paul was off doing something or something um we were just kind of going through a hiatus when i joined metallica 
And they asked, where were you when you got the phone call to join Metallica? He said, it was April 1st, April Fool's Day, and I was sitting on the toilet. I got a call from Mark Whitaker, their sound engineer, and after I hung up, I was like, I can't believe I just got that phone call. Was that an April Fool's Day prank? A couple days later, I got a tape from them, but I already had the demo, and I already knew two-thirds of the songs there. I told the guys in Exodus, and they were pissed. They were pissed. I remember Paul was so pissed that he poured beer over my head. He said, I can't believe you're doing this, Kirk. Then he poured beer over my head. I just took it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Kirk Hammett said at the time he felt guilty about leaving Exodus to join Metallica. Something tells me now he doesn't feel guilty about it at all, nor should he. All right, next up, let's talk about amazingly talented drummer Jay Weinberg. Obviously, he's the son of Max Weinberg from the E Street Band, and he joined Slipknot a few years ago, which was controversial for some fans. Uh, a lot of people were really favorable to Joey Jordison, obviously, who's another immensely talented drummer. But it's really safe to say that since he's been in the band, Jay Weinberg has been a monstrous drummer and proven without a shadow of a doubt that he is certainly worthy of being in the band. I've never seen anybody uh, sincerely question his talent. I mean, the, the guy is a monster behind the kit. And he spoke in a new interview about the pressures he faced joining Slipknot when there were so many people that understandably also missed having Joey Jordison in the band. In the new interview with The Metal Circus, he said, I wouldn't say I was walking on eggshells. For me, I understood my role in the context of a band changing its dynamic dramatically, working on new songs without two founding members, Joey and Paul Gray. Uh, that was huge for a band that had, at this point, existed almost 20 years or something. It wasn't like walking on eggshells because I knew the role that I was coming to play. I hadn't been in the band as long as they have, so it was a lot of learning. And still to this day, I approach this band uh, with open eyes and ears because I think every day I'm learning more and more. And every day, I think, as an individual and perhaps as a collective, we get closer and closer to understanding the potential of what this band really has. So no, not walking on eggshells because I had a lot to bring and a lot to prove, not an audience. I didn't concern myself with that because I can't control that. I can't control how a listening audience is going to accept new Slipknot songs that are my first song with the band or whatever. I can't control how anybody's going to react to that, but I had a lot to prove to myself. I had a lot to prove to my new bandmates that for whatever reason they were drawn to my playing and that I was asked to be a part of their band for a reason. I felt my role. I had to lead with confidence. I was like, I'm here to play music with these guys and there to enjoy it. Uh, so I'm going to enjoy it. And whatever role uh, that is within the band, I wasn't walking on eggshells because I had to really, I had to really show up every day. And with time, that doesn't change. But I had to show up every day and blow the doors off the place or try to. I had to convey to my new bandmates that they made the right decision. And that's something that I feel strongly about to this day. I don't take my role within the band very lightly. I take it very seriously because it means a lot to me. And I understand it means a lot to the other people. Because before I joined this band, this band meant a lot to me, so I understand how Slipknot's audience perceives uh, the band and makes it a part of their lives as well, so I understand that dynamic. And he's very right, and you can tell that he's very much a professional. It sounds like he views every day as another tryout for Slipknot, where he's constantly trying to uh, up his game. And again, anybody who's ever seen Jay Weinberg play live, and if you haven't, there's tons of videos on YouTube. The dude is a machine. He said, starting with the gray chapter and then kind of playing 200 shows and then working on another album that became We Are Not Your Kind and then playing however many shows that we were able to play until we got forced not to play any more shows, I had to really bring all my all every day. And whether that's working on new Slipknot songs and giving kind of my own spin on what I can do within the framework of a Slipknot song, that's what is important to me because I'm not going to emulate anybody. I'm not going to try to be anybody else because that's going to come off as phony. That's going to come off as disingenuous, and I'm not interested in that, and my bandmates aren't interested in that. So I think that we discovered was that there was a new and exciting sound that was existing between the dynamic with us, and that happened through working on songs they had been working on before I came into the band. And then when we would work on uh, songs together as collaborations, uh, that would bring about songs like the Negative One and Custer, stuff like that. That was exciting. I think that was the opposite of walking on eggshells. I think it was like, I've got to knock down the door every damn day. I've got pressure 
uh, it, it was less pressure to be conservative in things and it was more pressure to be uh, emphatic about things and to be like overly expressive and to be like, I've got to convince you, my new bandmates, that you've made the right choice. That was very important to me and still remains important to me. Naturally, a lot of people, again, favor Joey Jordison's time in the band, but you know, you can have, you can still like your old car and also like your new car as well. And the new car happens to be a Big Mac truck. Uh, when you're dealing with a drummer like Jay Weinberg. Again, that is all for now. Thanks so much for joining us today at Rockfeed. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on breaking news and updates.